techniques are there in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu? Anybody know? Three. All right, there's a, there's a bunch. I don't really know how many, but there's lots. All right, and so over the period of time that you train, all right, you're gonna find you know there's some basic movements. But there's all these different permutations, right? And so your game's constantly evolving, getting more fluid. You're learning new things, getting rid of old things. But some stuff kind of remains relatively constant, and those are some basic principles. All right, and that's what I want to talk to you guys about today. It's some basic principles of jujitsu, some things that I think about. Some of them. I'm going to show you or talk about today, and you're going to be like, well, no shit. All right, well, maybe it's going to have an impact for somebody else who has less experience than me. Maybe not. All right? Hopefully, at least one of the things we talk about today will actually kind of stick with you a little bit. So what I'm going to try and do when we do these classes, you know, rather than do just one or two things and give you ample time to drill them, I'm going to throw as much shit as I possibly can to you, give you very little time to drill it, and then I'll be available any day while I'm here. And I'm usually here every day of the second half of uh, lunch. If you want to come in, ask questions, fuck around, I'll be in there. Make sense? Yes, sir. All right. For those who don't know me, my name's Jay Bell. I run a school in Connecticut called Gracie Farmington Valley because I'm super creative and it's in the Farmington Valley. So uh, that's cool. I've been doing jiu-jitsu since 2000. Brad is one of the very first training partners I ever had. Yeah. All right, it's been a savage forever, and he's, uh, him and Joey Carter, the guys that got me involved here. So uh, without further ado, let's do some jiu-jitsu. All right, cool. Rack me. Yes, sir. All right. Do you want me to get off? Sure. I'll be in your guard. So everybody knows posture is important, right? Mm -hmm. Yes? Sorry. That was a question. All right. Yes, no? Yes. All right. So proper posture is important whether we're here or whether we're standing. The problem is that most people's posture sucks. All right? So if you think, okay, I want perfect posture, get my body up nice and straight, right? and you can check your posture, I'm gonna put my hands behind my back, I'm like, okay, Brad, pull me down with your legs. No, actually, pull me down, and oh shit, he pulls me down my legs, my posture's no good. Now why? I think it's right, because my chest is up, all right? and everything's great, everything's fine. It's better than this bullshit that like 80% of people do when they first start. And this is, I'm doing half of his job for him, right? You guys recognize that, right? If I'm here, I'm doing half his job for him, and then I'm using my arms to prevent him from collapsing me. Don't do that, all right? Get here, all right? Do this shitty posture for a second, take your belly button, push it back, all right? This is posture, so when he tries to pull you forward with his legs, he'll end up doing a sit-up if he pulls hard, all right? That's simple. All right, so good posture. Never here, all right, never here. Don't use your hands to stop this. Where's the danger point when you're in someone's guard? Am I in danger here? He might have a good hip bump sweep, all right, but he's not gonna fucking submit me when I'm here, all right? He's not usually gonna submit me when I'm here. It's everything in between. So if we know where the danger zone is, stay the fuck out of there, all right? So good posture, get here, belly button back, and let's go, three, two, one. That was too slow, ready? Three, two, one. All right, the next one. I need a gigantic person. Oh, who's, who's gigantic? Jeremy. All right. Jeremy's All right, wait. for a second. All right, this is gonna seem really fucking stupid. Bear with me. All right, guys, look over here. See the big wall? Why do we not think that way when we're training with our partners? Right? So often, we try and fucking move them around all the time. It's bullshit. Right? Be lazy. Be effective. Right? Well, what you guys to do, check your partners, it's super easy little drill. Just have them lay right here. All right? I'm going to put my hands here, and the first one, he's just going to be dead weight. I'm going to try and push him. Some of you guys will be able to push him. I'm going to be able to push him. I'm like, ah, I can't really move the shit. And then move yourself. It's the easiest thing in the world. All right, let's do that. Just demonstrate to yourself how easy it is to move yourself versus move your partner. Make sense? Yes. All right, three, two, one. All right, where am I going? I just lay down. On your back. Yes, sir. Sweet. Just where I want you. All right. How's your neck? You good? I guess, yeah, we'll see. We'll see. All right. Beautiful. All right. 
so two things. We've talked about this, I think, in the past, right? So what part of his body dictates his directional movement? Who's was a what? Yes, well done, young lady. All right? So his head. Where does his power come from or his ability to move? Legs? Hips. Hips. All right? I need a small lady for a second. All right? All right, perfect. I need a really big person. All right, lay down for me. In my head, I'm big. All right. So everybody recognizes the size difference between these two? All right. All right. So get in mount, please. right there. All right. Just lift your hips. Holy shit. All right, ready? Hold still. All right, ready? Okay. All right, lift your hips. Oh, Jesus. All right. So, thank you. That's all. <laughs> so, you're not going to lock down the hips. All right. You can inhibit movement a little bit, but you're never going to lock down the hips doing this. This isn't going to happen. All right. You can inhibit their movement from side to side. Right? But you're not truly going to lock down the hips. And if you're on the bottom, you recognize, I don't give a fuck how big somebody is, you can move them by hip bridging, always. So when we think about that, this is his, we're going to call this the power band. Right? It's a creepy name, but that's what I'm going to call it. The power band. <laughs> Sounds like some 80s workout. It is, dude. It's beautiful. Yeah. Right? So if I'm in mount, I don't want to be here. One, this looks super awkward. And two, flesh, flesh. he can always bump me. Always. I never want to be here. All right? If I'm here, it's only here for a second. All right? I immediately need to get under an elbow so that I can climb and apply better pressure and remove myself from the area where he can easily bump and open me. Does that make sense? It doesn't matter. As long as I'm here, Brett's always going to be able to bump and throw me to one side or the other side. So if I want to get up, he doesn't want me to get up, I'm going to make him let me get up. All right? There's a lot of different ways you can do this. Thank you, sir. All right. For right now, pretend you have a watch on. We just do a simple little what time is it. I bring my hand in here, and then I move. All right, so it comes in, and I do this. Come in, and then I turn. <laughs> oh, look, elbow came up. And I move up. Take his head, bring it this way. Right here. Now, when he bumps, who cares? I've removed myself from his power band. All right. So the principle is I never want to be here, all right? Because it's too easy for him to bump. You immediately look for a path to come up. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, one more time. Yeah, you can do it any way you want. It's the way I like to do it. Is I come in and I turn, elbow comes up, slide one knee up, take the hand, scoop the head, try and make his ear touch his shoulder. We're going to be more on that later. Bring the other knee up. So now my feet are on his hips, and I'm here. So now when he bumps, it doesn't do shit. Make sense? Yes. All right, three, two, one. Yeah. So another thing we're talking about, again, head dictates movement, but in addition to that, right? So if I push his head this way, I can go put me back in the guard. Some really crazy people will, right? or if he does the Grammy roll and rolls that way, and gets his legs back, he can. But I know that when I put his head this way, for the most part, he's only going that direction. I know if his head is this way, right? It's significantly easier for him to move his hips towards me and put me back in the guard. So let's talk about how do I make my partner weaker, right? So how do I you know, kind of stack the deck in my favor or you know, make us equal? So I'm rolling these big giant fuckers. You know, how do I you know, kind of make it more fair? So a couple things. One, if I want to mobilize the hips, right, before I talk, I can't really mobilize them this way. The only way I can mobilize the hips is by twisting them, right? If I have his hips here and pressure down here, I have a better chance to be able to mobilize his hip. He's not going to be able to bump. Uh, he may be able to have enough power to square back up, but he's not going to be able to hip bump when his hips are smashed. Or if it's key, and I really smash the shit out of his legs. All right? He's no longer able to do that hip bump. So it's the only way I can really take away that hip power is by twisting. All right? In the same way, if I have him twisted here and here, all right? so if I get here on top of Brad and he pushes me, all right? you feel like his regular strength. All right? If I take this leg, smash it down, smash down this shoulder, and put my chest back on top of him, and he tries to push again, he's not going to have the same power. Make sense? Yes. No. One of the other ways we can think about this is similar to what we were just doing. Brad digs his elbows in here, right? So I'm inside this elbow, but I can't bring it up because his arms are too tight. Just can't bring it up. Right? Too tight. The only thing I do 
So I take his head and I bring this ear to this shoulder. So what am I doing? I'm twisting his spine. That's all I'm doing. I'm not hurting him. I'm just twisting his spine. Now I come forward and now he's not able to stop it. Now granted there are some people big and strong enough that will be able to still stop it, but you're still making him weaker. So anytime you're in that situation, if there's an ability to twist the spine, now you make them weaker. So all I want you guys to do is get here, get underneath the elbow, all right? And I want you to try and come up, try and just drag your knee up and have them keep this tight, all right? Then take the head, bring it all the way over, all right, plant so his ear is touching his shoulder, and then bring that knee up again. Make sense? Let's do it, three, two, one. Again, the reason I'm showing you these things is just some basic stuff that if you understand, oh, well, I twist the head now, it's easier to do what I want to do, right? Or if I understand posture correctly, it's easier to be able to maintain that posture, right? I see so many people that train, and even train for a long time, that they're standing, they're wrestling, and I see them doing this shit. Like, oh, you just gave it away, right? The guy doesn't have to be a good wrestler to break you down, right? Or they start... You guys, see, watch Eric when Eric wrestles. Eric, Eric by dark. Nasty, right? Watch somebody who doesn't know how to wrestle, they do this. All he has to do is pull down my head a little bit and I'm screwed, all right? You always have to have posture, all right? Whether we're standing or whether we're on the ground. Okay, cool. So again, talking about making someone weaker, we talked about twisting the spine, all right? Another thing would be the goal is to try and, this is obvious though, right? The goal is to get his arms either up or across or better up and across, all right? So this will only take like two seconds, which is super obvious. Now get on, push me up. All right, good. Now put your arms here. All right, push me up now. <laughs> oh, look at that. All right, simple enough. Do that for like two seconds, then we'll move on. Right? Three, two, one. It's about you know, how do we take advantage of someone else, or how do we exert our force in someone else? How do we kind of stack the deck in our favor? All right? So I'm not. A very strong guy, so if I just pull somebody or push somebody, it's not going to work that effectively. So most of the things I do involve counter pressure. I'm pushing one way and pulling the other way. All right? So I'll show you one example with the gi, and then we'll do a bunch of examples without the gi. So it's actually going to be my right. So if I get a grip, all right? I'll grip this as strong as I can, all right? Most guys are going to be able to break this grip. So, you know how to break grips? No, no. Okay. Either. So, just the whiskey. You know break the grip? Just grab and break. All right, breaks the grip. No problem. So, how do I change that using what I was just talking about with counter pressure to make it so it's difficult for him to break the grip? All right? My bottom hand holds, my top hand's here. So, I'm pushing up and pulling down. Break the grip now. And I could do this, okay, keep going. So you notice my hand now. I'm not even gripping with the top hand. It's this grip is what's keeping it. Two pressures. Make sense? Right. So how do we take that same principle and apply it to Nogi? Right? So who's ever been in a situation here where you're trying to go for that old school Americana, all right? Some of you big fuckers probably make it work. Me, I can never get that arm out, right? Particularly the guy's locked with a death grip. I'm like, ah, can't do it. So how do I make this work? Counter pressure. Push down, push away. Pull up, push away. This, very hard. This is easy. This is easy. Make sense? So what I want you guys to do is get here, don't hold, right? Just get super tight, all right? First time, you're just gonna get both hands here, put all your weight, uh, eventually you might get it, grind it out, see what you can do. Next time, again, same thing, hold, push down. This way. Make sense? Let's do it, three, two, one. So think about counter pressure. Same thing, you do the same thing from the bottom, right? Whether it's gi or no gi. All right. Obviously, you can do the same thing from the top in a bunch of different situations. It's really the only way that I could start to exert some influence on someone who's stronger than me. But again, I'm stacking the deck. Two limbs versus one, two different pressures. Get myself off the power band, advance my position with my ultimate goal of trying to get their arms like this. 
and then do horrible mean things to them. All right? So let's take a look on the bottom. You know, my goal is always to try and improve my position first, and then if a submission pre presents itself, great. We're thinking on the bottom, and we want to sweep someone. So what are the triggers for sweeping someone? So there's different types of sweeps. But traditionally, you either need to carry their weight, or you need to be able to kind of flip them over, right? And so what I look for a lot of times is that forward momentum, and I want their shoulders past their knees, right? If my shoulders are past my knees, my base is not as effective. Right? So if I'm here, right, good base. I'm here, my base is not effective. If you twist my spine or move me to the side, it's going to be much more difficult for me to prevent the sweep. Does that make sense? Right. So let's say I have a grip I like a lot from Mogi. And again, I'm doing counter pressure. So I'm holding by his wrist, kind of his hand and his wrist. I'm holding by his elbow. This hand is pulling, pulling, this hand is pushing, all right? If I just hold his arm like this, all right, this is a decent grip, but Brad's always gonna get this back, all right? If I'm here, it's gonna be more difficult for him to get, his, get it back, and he's gonna have to engage his other arm usually, unless he's way stronger than me. He's gonna have to engage that other arm to be able to get the arm back. So this is a grip I like a lot. From here, I plant foot, foot, and I take this hand now and I place it on my hip. Right? I'm not going for the sweep yet. Why? Because if I try and sweep Brad here, he's got too, his base is too strong. Right? So instead, I extend. And then I wait to see if he follows. So right now, Brad's shoulder is above and past his knee. So I might be able to get the sweep. Brad's very good. He's going to be able to adjust too quickly. So I wait for him to move forward. I'm putting pressure. I'm pulling and pushing. And as he comes forward, It's a simple sweep, but it's designed to kind of demonstrate the best time to sweep someone. You either have to load them up or you wait for them to move forward, and when his shoulders are past his knees. Does that make sense? So over here, that push as he moves forward. Right there. Keep this connection. One more time. Push as he moves forward. Very easy. You could do the same thing, come here. Or I could be here, just playing with Brad, doing this. As he steps forward, as soon as that knee lands, there you go. All right? you know, he doesn't have to be fooling your guard. So Brad can do the same thing to me. I'm here, he's kind of turned a little bit. If he tries to sweep me now, with that sweep, it's not going to work. As I go here, as we move forward and engage and our weight comes past our knees. Make sense? Yes. Alright, three, two, one. Alright, so next. So, actually, and then put him in a triangle. Alright, good. So you should finish it. Finish it. Alright, good. Great, thank you. Alright, so perfectly good triangle. Alright, nothing wrong with it at all. I'm going to show you a couple different ideas, and you can use it or, or lose it, depending on your choice. For me, the triangle is all about hip angle, right? So I'm old, I don't like being stacked. I got stacked a lot when I was younger, my neck's fucked up, I don't want to be stacked anymore. So how do I avoid being stacked, and what do I mean by hip angle? So, everybody knows the difference between like a 90 degree angle and a 180 degree angle, right? 180 degree angle looks like this. It's straight, right? 90 degree angle looks mostly like this. So if it's less than 90, it's acute angle. Those, those are the hot ones. And if it's more than 90, it's an obtuse angle. Right? <coughs> Make sense? Didn't think you were going to learn that shit today, did you? <laughs> All right. So when I think of the triangle, I always want an obtuse angle. I always want greater than 90 degrees. I want greater than 90 degrees for my hips, and I prefer, if possible, greater than 90 degrees for my partner's hips. Why? So what's the most powerful part of our body? Hips. hips. So we have five people to remember that. Did we already lose that one? <laughs> so hips is where all of our power is, right? Yes, sir. Down or up? Uh, on top first. first. So a lot of times when people go for the triangle, right, they wrap immediately. And they're already here and they're bent. Right? And look how my knee's already tight. And can I finish this? Of course I can finish this. Go here, go here, go here. I can do all those things. 
And even this one works really well, but what am I doing to my spine? I'm twisting it. And what do we know happens when you twist your spine? Exactly, you get weaker. So why the fuck do I want to do that? I'm not saying it doesn't work. It does. But for me, when I think of the triangle, right, I want to punch him. I'm actually going to do this to you. I'll do this to Sean later. I want to punch him with my thigh. Right? My hips lift, and I punch with the thigh. So it looks like, like this. All right? So my hips are high. I've eliminated that space. I take my heel, and I chop down. So you should almost be able to choke him from here. Right? And then the next thing for the triangle is I have to hide his shoulder. So I don't just go here, and I don't want to see his shoulder. His shoulder pisses me off. I go out. <laughs> over the shoulder, active toes, down and away. Another piece, I'll hold the head, but I don't do this and erode all that good work I did. I keep my hips engaged, I pull the head, I thrust my hips into his throat. Okay. Right, cool. I'm gonna do it to Sean. Sean, come here. I know, I like it too much. I like you too, Sean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so again, you don't always have to do this, but I like that leg. I don't do this shit, right? This works. I shouldn't call it shit because it can work, especially at a good angle. But for me, I don't want to wrap. I want to hit. Lock, right? And then I go out and I hide his shoulder. Active toes, down and away, pull. And I want this angle now. So my hips are greater than 90 degrees. I pull, thrust my hips. Make sense? All right, let's do it. Three, two, one. I overemphasize that smack it in the neck. It's fun. You don't have to do it that hard if you don't want to, but you know, there's a psychological warfare aspect to jujitsu. All right, you're not gonna hurt anybody doing that, but you can make it do this. And sometimes that's good. All right. But what I was seeing a lot of, which is normal, because it's you know you, you kind of revert back to what you know, right? People are getting here, great, and they're doing this. So this is fine, right? But it's not what I'm talking about. Because what am I doing? I'm here, oh, I do all that work, and then I bring everything in. So I'm eroding that angle, all right? So I'm bigger than Brad, or if I'm here, I'm not, uh, not going to choke him right now, but if I'm here, he can always stack me from here, even if he's smaller than me. I can't really stop it. If I brace into this sort of shit, okay, yeah, there's some stuff I can do, but just with this, I can't stop it with my hips. I'm not strong enough. However, come up. Don't turn it. Come up. Chop directly down, right? So you should feel some compression in the neck now, right? So now when I come out with my hips here, so now when he wants to stack me, all I have to do is walk my shoulders, right? <laughs> I want to work as little as possible, all right? So make sure you get that first leg chopped down in the same angle. So I'm trying to hit his neck here with the back of my thigh, chopping down, right? So not this, this. Pay attention to your hip angle, all right? Don't be in a hurry to go for the finish. I'm just as happy if he starts trying to drive into me now to knock him over, all right? Because then I take the arm. So I'm perfectly fine with that. I don't care what I catch him with, all right? I don't get extra points for the triangle. Boom, straight down with active toes already. Tell me this shit, boom. Hold, don't collapse, hold, shoot your hips. All right, three, two, one. Again, we chop straight down, come out. Where's my ass right now? Yeah. It's in the air. Where's 90% of the room's ass? All right, this is, now, this is exactly where I'm saying I don't want to be, because now he's going to stack me. I may still get it, right? but me, I'm going to get a sore neck, so even if I get a submission, I'm going to go home with a twisted neck. He's going to go home and be like, oh, I got tapped once. Who cares? All right. My hip's up if he tries to stack me. Yeah. Or I can abandon it easily at any time. Also, what I like to do from here is I'm going to try and redirect him if he stacks. It's easier if my foot's still on the hip, but I can still do it a little bit here. So if he starts stacking, I look to redirect. Once we redirect, I hold. I step and my hips come through and up. They come through and up. All right, one more time. So again, hips up, chop down, open, 
Again, you can do it right from here and knock them over. It's fine, too. But open, and I'm here. This is what I'm looking for. And I'm usually now attacking the arm, and I'm turning. So if I got the triangle already, great. If not, we're here. I hold. Step this way. If his arm's bent, still hold. Step. And it just takes more. Make sense? He's got that, or you want to see that one again? Got it? All right, three, two, one. Here, who competes? All right, okay. Who competes in tournaments that allow leg locks? All right, if you're not doing the leg pummeling drill, and you either train with people to do leg locks, or you compete where there's a possibility of doing leg locks, you're out of your fucking mind. Right? <laughs> it is way more difficult to get good at leg locks or get good at escaping leg locks than it is to get good at avoiding leg locks. And if you do the leg pummel regularly, regularly, right, you can get very good at not allowing someone to establish that control position. And what's Jiu Jitsu is about establishing control. Leg locks. What's leg locks about? It's establishing control of your knee. Right? They have to have control above the knee for most of them. Right? If they have control above your knee which they usually obtain by getting that inside control initially, that's the issue. Make sense? One more. So one of the ways I think you can improve your jiu-jitsu. <coughs> just laying down, it's fine. I'm gonna switch, put the head in a second. Is by linking upper body to lower body, all right? Now I recognize this would be more challenging for a school that doesn't want you doing leg locks, it's fine. But maybe you can just drill it so you can get comfortable with linking. Control of the upper body, control of the lower body. Right? And so one of the easiest ways to demonstrate that would be, you know, if I'm going for an arm bar, let's say. Now obviously if I have control of the arm and I feel able to extend it, I'm gonna take the arm. Right? But occasionally if the guy's just too strong, he's too crafty, for some reason I'm just unable to get the arm or I want to switch it up a little bit, or I'm just working on my transitions, any one of those things. Or maybe he's doing that newfangled King Cornelius you know, defense where he's got his arm in here. I haven't even seen uh, that. Oh, I'll show you that one. Teach me that. Uh, <laughs> there's one more here, and then you can bridge his feet, you know, pick it for his feet. But any one of those things. So I'm here, I look to see if this needs up. Sometimes they just give it to me. I'm not sure why, but they do. All right? And so when that happens, I say thank you. And I hold this leg. Right? And then I'm going to drop to my side. My knee's going to come down to the ground, and I drop to my side. So my knee comes down, drop to my side. Simple enough, right? I take my other leg, and I release my other leg, and it comes through. Now I switch hands. Come up on my elbow, and spin. Right? And here, see the control. Tight knees, I control his knee. All right? If he's easily able to get his knee out, no bueno. All right? and this is one of the easier ways to transition between an upper body attack and a lower body attack. Now, granted, if I think I can finish the armbar, I'm going to finish the armbar. Duh. All right? If I can't finish the armbar, I'm having trouble, or he goes for that defense where he's holding his own leg, or just I need to switch it up. I hold, I hold, I bring my knee back, and I fall to the side. So shoulders down, knees down, this foot comes through. You can come through this way, or you can stop. I see it both ways. Grip, come to my elbow, turn, right, and then start to work the control. A lot of times when I'm here, I'll reach for the far leg first. I won't even try and submit him yet. I'll reach for this. And then now, again, it's control first, now. I'm going to work to submit it because now I have better control and his ability to escape is heavily mitigated. If he's a very good leg locker, he's still got the ability to push down, hide his legs. Makes sense. You guys got that one or you see it again? One more time? All right. Shoulder hits, knee hits, either stomp or push. Switch, come up on my elbow, and then my hips turn. For me, grip, pull, 
control, control, and then I'm going to start to work the finish. Make sense? All right, let's do a three, two, one. That applies to the person on the bottom as well as the person on the top. All right, so what do I mean by that? All right, so if I'm rolling with a very powerful person, which unfortunately I have to do on a somewhat regular basis, I'm very concerned with not only my hip angle, I'm concerned with their hip angle. So what do I mean by that? All right? So if Brad is putting a triangle on me, and let's say Brad's like me and doesn't want to get stacked, and he puts a triangle on me right here, right? and his hips are down, or even up, whatever, yeah, it's down, it's fine. Right? Am I going to be able to stack him with my hip angle like this? So my hip angle now is acute. So do I have power or no? No? Yes. I drive forward. I have power, right? My like, granted, I have more power than my feet. However, what if I'm here? Do I have power? No. My hip angle now is obtuse or right. I can't really see it. I'm guessing. Right? It's either right or obtuse. It's one of those, right? All right, All right. Now I don't have power. Right? So now if Brad sits this bad boy on, I'm not stacking him. I'm just tapping. So when you're rolling with someone, right, don't be in a hurry for the submission. Right? Get everything stacked up in your favor and then go for it when you have the best chance of success. Right? So often we're like, oh shit, the next there, oh, I'm going for it. Right? And then you miss it horribly. Right? So I'll get into the position to work the triangle. But since I you know, abhor being stacked, I'll get here. Right? I'm just hanging out. And now if I can move myself, well now it's super easy. Right? And again, I'm moving myself, I'm not moving him. I'll create some distance. Oftentimes when I create distance, what do people do? They chase you, right? I want to pass your guard. I can't pass your guard by sitting back here. So you move away from me. I chase you. My hip angle now increases. I have less space. It's easier for you to attack me or to sweep. Does that make sense? So to me, when I think triangle, it's hip angle. Right? There's lots of other little details, but the first thing I consider is hip angle. I don't want to go for it unless my hip angle is greater than 90 degrees. Right? And in a perfect world, I want his hip angle to also be greater than 90 degrees. So you have two obtuse angles going at it. All right? Make sense? Sweet. All right, so let's switch gears a little bit. When we think of jujitsu, what's the goal? And everybody can have a different goal. You know, it's not really a right answer. I mean, there is to me, but... You know, there's lots of different ways to think about it. What's the goal? Control. Who said control? Oh, I love you. <laughs> All right? Most of the time I get people, submission, dominance, look awesome, lose weight, whatever. It's all good. <laughs> For me, it's 100% control. All right? Everything's control-based. Right? Now, it doesn't mean that you can't beat me without using control. If you're faster, you can kind of cut angles and do all this other stuff. You know, there's some beautiful technique where you may not be in control the whole time and still be able to tap someone. But I know that if I can control your leg, I can take it home with me, all right? Now when I say control, I mean infinite control, like you can't get it back, it's mine, it belongs to me, all right? If I can control your arm, all right? Chances are I'm gonna take it home, all right? If I can control your neck, all right? These are those little pieces, it's control, and how do we exert control, all right? It's always a minimum of two limbs attacking one, always. If you can enlist more, Great. If you can get all four of your limbs together to attack that one limb, better. But always a minimum of two. All right? I try and stack the deck whenever I can. I try and twist his spine. Now, I'm not talking doing the twister submission, but I try and twist that spine in ways to make him a little weaker. I try and get his arms up to make him a little weaker so that I can improve my control. All right? And patience is key. All right? So if we're talking a control-based game, I have to be patient. I have to be in a situation where I'm going to wait sometimes to allow my control to improve or wait for you to make a mistake. Does that make sense? Sweet. All right, so one of the things we kind of work with a little bit too is, so how many people's gyms do they do leg locks in? All right, so it's improving over here. Awesome. All right, so if we're thinking leg locks, what's the first thing that you always have to think about, all right, for leg locks? All right, if you don't want to get leg locks. So it takes longer to get good at leg locks than it does to avoid leg locks, right? And avoiding leg locks is not the same thing as escaping leg locks. So two very different skills, 
And to me, I think that avoidance always beats escape. If you can't get me into that position and you can't get me into a control position, great. All right? And I don't have very good escapes. I've been doing jiu-jitsu for a very, very long time. I'm pretty good at avoiding shit. But if you get my arm here, you're going to tap me every time. I don't care who you are. You get white belt. If you get my arm here, you're going to catch me. All right? So when you think of foot locks and you want to avoid foot locks, what's the thing you have to worry about the most? That you have to fight for the most? Yeah, you know leg locks. Yeah. <laughs> inside control. I saw you last year, too. I know you know him. So I can never, ever let him get inside control, all right? Even with one leg, all right? And if he does get inside control, and I know he knows leg locks, then I have to realize it's coming, and it's coming quickly, all right? So in my gym, I got a couple guys that are very high-level leg lock guys, all right? And they're better at leg locks than I am. But they don't catch me in leg locks all the time because of that one thing. I, I know that one thing is to avoid letting them get that inside control. Right? And so what's one of the most obvious spots you see it from? So if he's in butterfly guard, right? and I see people give this up all the time, even in my gym where you have leg lock guys. I'm here, and I step in. Right? It's a leg lock all day long, and it's one of the most basic setups for like the honey hole or you know, double wash or whatever that people have. If I get here, and then I step over while I'm holding this one, I step over and come down. I'm right. Right. Super basic. I can do it you know, right from here. Same thing. Right. You can never let that happen. Right. So the game, what we do at my gym, is we do a leg pummeling drill. Most people's schools do leg box do leg pummeling, right? Yeah. Who here has not done leg pummeling? All right, great. So let's do it for somebody. So we start just right here. Just start right here. I have one foot in. He has one foot in. All right. What he's gonna try and do is he's gonna try and get both feet in and then maybe get to a position where he can control my leg. All right? And I'm trying to do the same thing. So it's this battle of I come in, he's coming in, I'm controlling, coming in. This, this is the game. Not letting someone get inside. And then retreating if you have to, right? That's the game. Make sense? All right, let's try that. <laughs> Three, two, one. All right, so I got Five minutes, uh, four minutes for questions. <laughs> one minute, I'm picking up the Alright. So questions on anything I went over today. Again, I apologize not spending a lot of time on any of the techniques necessarily themselves, but today it's more about principles and ideas. If you don't remember the technique, who cares? Remember the idea. You can't remember how to do that leg lock? So what? Chain, upper body, lower body attacks. If you can't remember the triangle, so what? Remember the hip angle. All right? Remember that I pushed myself away versus put my, push my partner away. Remember counter pressure, push pull, two limbs versus one limb. Remember posture always, always have good posture. All right? This is not good posture. Okay? What? Power band. That's just kind of kinky. It's kind of my thing. <laughs> you know? We all have our own little, you know, little hicks, right? Any other questions? I have a question, Shoot. but perhaps it is. Uh, I think the only one you didn't cover is concept in terms of control from back control. Back control? Yeah, I have one real quick, right? So, which is funny because I'm so lazy, so here's one to not be lazy. Right. Yeah, that's good. So, where I see people, in my mind, making mistake the most is their control is only up here. They're only controlling here, all right? So how does he always need to get out of this position? Does he ever get out just from my moving my arms? Rarely, he always gets out with the legs. That's the way out. So why am I gonna be lazy and just do this with my legs? Does that make sense? Granted, don't do this, all right? We all know that, hopefully, don't do this. Some freaks can get away with it, but in general, don't do that. I wanna take my legs and control. Yeah. Just here. <laughs> and then here. All right. And when I think this piece too, it's so sword in the sheath. All right. So and my chin is tight. All right. So that's one. When I think this is kind of my starting position from here. Additionally, if we fall to the side, I don't keep this anymore. It's too easy for me, in my opinion, for him to stay in some of this. I don't want this at all. I want this or I want to lock this. 
This is a little more dangerous. Alright. Sometimes I figure if they can do something crazy, like do it over somebody's gonna then I'm probably not gonna do that. I'll do this. Alright? Like this a lot. The one issue with this though is if he gets this arm here, he can spin into a leg lock attack now. Come through and go into a vertigo, which is nasty. So you have to know if that's there. Nope. I got for control from here. Here, tight legs, sword in the sheath, hold. Hold. Right? This is kind of the game. Make sense? Don't be lazy. And if I'm gonna be lazy, I'll just come right here. I'll just start here and bring him back. Answer your question? We have time for one more question, maybe not. All right, let's do a photo.